Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Friday's edition of Morning Brews. My name, of course, is Ryan Smeltz, and today I want to talk to you about your hiring process. So, this, once again, is something I'm going to be shooting from the hip on. I do have a little bit of experience as it relates to searching for candidates, making sure to cast a wide enough net, uh, receiving applications, combing through them, some things to look for, uh, the interview process, and onboarding new employees. Before we jump into it today, I definitely want to thank you for tuning in and listening to each episode once again. These are going to continue to be ad-free. And you will notice that if we put out exclusive audio content, then there is a subscription attached to that. It is only 99 cents. However, we welcome your feedback, so be sure to go to the website, shoot us a message. I like it. I don't like it. Add more of this, more of that, what have you. Uh, So let's get started. When it comes to the hiring process, Obviously, everybody wants to find a good fit. I think one of the biggest disconnects in that hiring process is when it comes to finding someone who is a good fit for your company, that doesn't always mean what you think it means. It doesn't always mean you're going to find somebody who's loyal and dedicated and a hard worker, somebody with a good work ethic. Uh, that's going to show up on time every day, put in their their full uh, shift, eight hours, ten hours, whatever it is, <clears throat> and then clock out and go home. Uh, it also means that you're going to be a good fit for them. And it's not just the company, but also the owner and the management as well. Because when it comes to leadership and coaching, Uh, One of the things we always talk about is, do you like to be coached uh, more from a cheerleader or drill sergeant? So obviously a cheerleader is always focusing on the good things and the things that the individual did well. And a drill sergeant is much more direct and has a tendency to point out errors and the solutions to fix them instantly. So if you're unaware of those two things or your management team only approaches things from one direction, uh, then maybe your company and management style are not going to be a good fit for that individual. I know plenty of people who work better with the cheerleader type coaching and they definitely have a tendency to be a little bit more involved with their feelings. And the only reason I bring that up is because if you approach that individual too much with a very direct, hey, don't do it that way, do it this way. Hey, you did that wrong, here's how you fix it. Uh, Then they're gonna get caught up and it's gonna be too much for them to handle eventually. uh, And they may not want to expose themselves to that environment anymore. So the saying goes, People don't quit jobs, they quit bosses. And in that scenario, it's 100% true. If somebody's coming to work, they may like the job. Maybe they're in customer service, they're a people person, they like helping people. So if somebody shows up irate and they're able to calm them down and resolve their problem, but then management and the team at the job are just always telling them what they're doing wrong and never telling them what they're doing right, Then they say, hey, as much as I love this job, I'm just not going to be able to stick around anymore. So uh, when it comes to finding someone that's a good fit, just keep in mind that those that that's a two way street. Um, And that that's why that's one reason why I prefer minimum of a three interview process. Now, if you're a small business, don't fret. That's not as involved as you would think. However, prior to even contacting the person. I'm assuming most people have some sort of job ad out there or listing. Um, My two favorites, especially with as small as we are, opening up more positions. Um, I use Indeed and Facebook. Uh, A lot of people don't like Facebook. I have one guy working for me now 
who is a real quality guy. Um, checks all the boxes as far as what you would want in a pretty typical employee. Uh, but he's also very open with me. Uh, and I try to be open with him as well in a sense that if he needs something or he needs some extra time off, um, it, you know, I'm, I'm able to facilitate that. And there have been plenty of mistakes where him and I have maybe miscommunicated or um, not, uh, not, not necessarily done things the right way. Um, and instead of him trying to pass the buck or not take responsibility, he works with me uh, to make sure that we come to a solution. Um, I found him on Facebook, uh, so I didn't, I didn't find him. He applied on Facebook. So um, I have gotten some 100% garbage applications, uh, garbage in a sense that um, the there was no resume or it was very little, and the answers to the questions was literally just somebody pressing buttons on their keyboard. Uh, I'm assuming that they were using that to apply for unemployment. However, um, I just mark it as rejected and move on. So I, I do like uh, the job listings on Facebook. Uh, it seems to be helpful in a way. I like job listings on Indeed. Um, I'm sure if you're a larger company uh, doing more hiring, you might use something, uh, you know, maybe a more of a paid subscription type thing instead of pay for the job ad itself. Um, but what, whatever works for you. So you get the resume and the application from the individual and you go through it. So one of the, I'm probably not going to say anything here uh, that you're not already aware of because I, I'm not an expert in HR. Um, I have done a lot of hiring. I've done a ton of interviewing. Um, I, I would say I've done less firing because in a lot of the cases where the interviewing and the hiring was my responsibility, the firing wasn't necessarily my responsibility. Uh, whereas now I get to handle all of that. So, um, number of jobs they've had in what amount of time obviously none of these are a 100 percent showstopper but a, a larger number of jobs in a short amount of time uh, makes me ask some questions um especially if say they graduated high school say two to four years ago and they've held what appears to be two jobs at one time uh, in that that period and not not just two jobs at the same time but over and over and over and over and over again and when it goes from uh, the name of a company I'm familiar with to maybe one I'm not familiar with uh, and back again then then I ask questions so it's like say they worked at McDonald's and then they worked at Lowe's Hardware um, and then they worked at some mom-and-pop restaurant um, and then they worked again at, say, Walmart. So I'm just, you know, I, I don't see any continuing education. I, I don't see any, um, any, any current college enrollment or anything like that. And they're just kind of hopping around at what looks to either be uh, two full-time jobs or, or two part-time jobs. Um, and so, and especially if they list it beside there. So if they list two full-time jobs, you know, maybe they just like money or a full-time and a part-time. Um, but they could also have a very large family that they're trying to take care of. Um, <clears throat> I'm also concerned uh, with their commute. Uh, so a lot of times I'll wait till I get on the phone to ask them about that, but you can always see where they're currently located. Obviously, on Indeed, sometimes I do get applications where it says the person is in Atlanta, Georgia, or something like that, and that's not true, so I'm not sure how that works on the back end. Maybe it's on their profile, and it's just giving me inaccurate information. Um, but then uh, another thing which I kind of already touched on I look at is when they graduated high school. Um, so... Uh, primarily just in a sense that, um, maybe if dates aren't lining up with jobs, uh, then when they graduated high school can tell you, 
uh, what time between that and their last job has actually passed. Because if you see the five most recent jobs on there, if their graduation year is 2000 and, uh, 2019, um, then, then maybe it's just been about two and a half years since they graduated high school and they've had five jobs in that time. Whereas if they graduated high school in 2004, uh, it's been a lot more time with a lot fewer jobs during that period. So um, maybe if they on their resume they don't put time periods under the job, which is somewhat uncommon, that graduation year uh, can definitely help you determine um what what amount of time has passed during those previous jobs uh the last thing i'll talk about on the resume is um <clears throat> you want to look at their their qualifications and additional skills uh i don't really care like i i have a guy working for me right now who doesn't have a high school diploma so it's pretty irrelevant However, uh, someone willing to come into an entry-level job who has a college degree uh, is a little bit more attractive to me um, than, uh, number one, the person with a college degree who didn't apply, because uh, most, most people who don't want to accept an entry-level position out of college have a sense of entitlement. Um, and, and so... <laughs> I mean, it, it confuses me because everyone has to start somewhere and I've seen people retire from the military after 20 or 30 years and have to go start all over in another job because most jobs you have to start entry level or pretty close to it. Um, however, if someone's not willing to start entry level, then I'm not sure that I would want that person in my organization to begin with. Uh, and number two, the college degree shows me a little bit more uh, dedication and uh, accomplishment. They're, they have the perseverance to stick it out and uh, basically make sure that they complete whatever is set in front of them. So um, the college degree itself doesn't tell me anything about what they know or what they're capable of. Uh, it's more of a credentialing thing. So. Uh, if I have two identical candidates, uh, I am, which obviously would never happen, but I would be more likely to uh, offer the person with the college degree because uh, especially if the other person were to have some college on there, like they went for a year and then they never completed it because the person with the college degree I know is going to finish a task, whereas the person with some college um, may get bored or tired of it after six months to a year. So uh, that's that's the last thing I'm going to say on the applications. Uh, we are running a little bit long, so I'm going to cover interviews on Monday's episode. Uh, I'm going to go over the phone call, which is, is interview number one. Uh, it shouldn't be more than a couple minutes. I'm going to cover the, the in-person and or Zoom interview. Uh, that should be number two, and you can always do both. Um, one, to get to know the person, and then maybe the in-person so they can see your facility and the work environment, depending on if you have a brick and mortar. And then number three is the follow-up phone call. Uh, so like I said, I'll cover all that on Monday. I appreciate you tuning in. If you have any comments or feedback, feel free to leave them. You can also go to the website and contact us or sign up to be a guest on the show if you're a small business owner. So thanks again. Leave us a five-star review. Uh, tell your friends to subscribe and leave a five-star review as well. My name is Ryan Smeltz, and I will see you on Monday's episode of Morning Brews.